The kitchen is often called the heart of the home. Why? Because it's a place of education. It's in the kitchen where I learned how to cook. So today in my kitchen, I'm going to teach you how to make two of my mom's signature dishes. I'll tell a story and we'll hear some beautiful music. Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to Carol's kitchen. Our musical guest today is my longtime friend and voice student, Andrew Lauritsen, tenor. And at the piano is Andrew's able accompanist, the <laughs> lovely Charity Tolosig. She is a sophomore music major from Crestwood, Illinois. a name for the Son of God who came ruined sinners to reclaim what a Savior bearing shame and scoffing in my place, condemned he stood, sealed my pardon with his blood. What a savior! Guilty, vile, and helpless wing, spotless lamb. Of God was he, full atonement can it be? What a Savior! Lifted up was he to die, it is finished, was his cry. Heaven exalted high. What a Savior! When He comes, our glorious King, all His ransom. thing I'm going to teach you how to make is creamed chipped beef. Now that's comfort food, something my mom made when we were kids that we really, really loved. I start out with three packages of the Buttig original beef, the dried beef, and I cut it into julienne strips, kind of wholesale. got three packages of it and obviously you can have more or less 
depending upon how many people you're feeding. I know we kids really, really love this. Served over hot biscuits. It is what we thought good eating. I've got the pan already prepared on a medium heat and you spray with some cooking spray to start with and then add our beef. Moving this around, <clears throat> let it warm up a little bit. And I start with uh, adding some flour, add a half, a, excuse me, a third of a cup, this is a third of a cup of flour to the mixture. And a lot of these things we add while it's still getting warm so that it will come together nicely when the time is appropriate. I have a half a teaspoon each of garlic powder, onion powder, and salt. And let that warm up. Mix all this together. This way you'll have thickening for the gravy without having to uh, add it later and this stops it from being lumpy. I don't remember if my mom, my mom's don't think it was lumpy. Two cups of milk. For me this is 1% milk. You can make it as rich as you desire. That's great. And one cup of water. Folks, this is so simple. This is pretty much, we're just gonna wait for it to come to a boil and wait for it to thicken. And this uh, gets served uh, over the top of bacon uh, powder biscuits. And you can be the homemade kind from scratch, or you can have what my mom always called the, the Wapam biscuits, where you whop them on the side and open them up. And those are very tasty as well. So it's thickening up nicely now. Plenty of heat. Well, this is thickened up very nicely and it will sit nicely on the biscuits and I think you'll enjoy it. But now, Andrew is going to sing two songs for us. His first is a beautiful French love song by Gabrielle Fauré. You music geeks out there will especially appreciate Fauré's musical pun. The name of this song is Lydia and he composed it using the Lydian mode with the raised fourth. So a little subtle musical humor on the side. After that, Andrew will sing a humorous song about a chance meeting with a leprechaun on the Irish countryside somewhere where the singer tries to outsmart the little fella and walk away with a pot of gold. Andrew? Te baiser, te baiser, 
casa y no dormí bien con los le delizo como en el censo todo tu yo no te hago su tema In a shady nook one moonlit night A leprechaun I spied With scarlet cap and coat of green A cruise keen by his side Twas tick tack tick his hammer went Upon a weeny shoe And I laughed to think of a purse of gold But the fairy was laughing too hmm. With tiptoe step and a beating heart, quite softly I drew nigh. There was mischief in his merry face, a twinkle in his eye. He hammered and sang with tiny voice, and drank his mountain dew. Oh, I laughed to think he was caught at last. But the fairy was laughing too. As quick as thought I seized the elf, your fairy purse, I cried. The purse he set is in her hand, the lady by your side. I turned and looked, the elf was off, and what was I to do? Oh, I laughed to think what a fool I'd been. And the fairy was laughing too. Our second Mom Sen dish of the day is old fashioned fried corn. Now you can make it with corn straight off the cob that hasn't been uh, boiled or at all and just cut it off. Or you can even be extra quick and use canned corn. I picked somewhere kind of in the middle and use frozen corn for our old-fashioned fried corn recipe. I'm starting with an eighth of a cup, excuse me, a quarter of a cup of uh, bacon drippings. Some people will actually fry bacon and crumble it up and add it to it. And you can do that as well. But I save my bacon drippings. So uh, I've got a quarter of a cup of bacon drippings. And I have this is uh, two pounds of frozen corn, which is a lot of corn. While the corn is warming up now, in a separate pan, we're going to put a half a stick of butter and let that melt and we're going to saute a cup of chopped onion and a, a cup and a quarter, maybe a cup and an eighth of uh, chopped green pepper. The recipe calls for two small peppers and I got one large and I realized that after I was cutting it up that uh, one large, it was way, way large. So add this while the margarine is 
melting. Start this at a medium heat. Look at us making hay on two burners. I can hear the bacon starting to fry the corn a little bit. The onions and green peppers are translucent now and so I am going to add them to the corn and let the flavors meld and it's going to take about 15 minutes for the corn to get completely done. So we're going to put a lid on it. And while this sautés and fries to perfection, Andrew is going to favor us with one final song. It's entitled Carrick Fergus. It's a hauntingly beautiful song named after a town in Northern Ireland where the singer's sweetheart lives.
but I am sick now, and my days are numbered. Come all you young Our story today is entitled, The Basement Blues. I electrocuted my dog. It was an accident, of course, a terrible accident. Who in their right mind would purposely electrocute their dog? The unfortunate incident occurred during one of the most hectic springs of my life. I was directing the sound of music at school, teaching a full roster of classes, planning my wedding, as well as dealing with flooding in my basement. Meteorologists were calling it the rainiest spring ever in southeastern Wisconsin. My then fiance John and I should have been finalizing the menu for our wedding reception, planning our honeymoon, and setting goals for our future together. Instead, we bought his and hers water vacuums and spent every spare moment trying to keep my house, soon to be our house, from setting sail down Highway 26. It was pretty stressful. John and I concluded that if we could survive the flood of 04, our marriage could withstand just about anything. My dog, Bosley, an English Springer Spaniel, was having a rough spring too. He suffered terribly from storm angst. A sudden drop in the barometric pressure always made him anxious, but the rumbling thunder and crashing lightning that followed catapulted him into a state of utter frenzy. Poor Bozzy. The fateful rainy evening in question, I was in the basement water vacuuming. Bosley, embroiled in storm angst, was following me everywhere. I leaned over to adjust the vacuum nozzle, Boz moved in to lick my face, and that's when it happened. He stepped on a crack in the extension cord laying on the wet carpeting and got zapped. He let out a yelp and hightailed it up the basement steps. At first, it seemed only to have frightened him. Sure, he was wild-eyed and panting, but there was nothing new on a rainy day. The next day, however, was a rare day without rain, and Boz was still behaving strangely, so I took him to the vet. The diagnosis was devastating. The dog's insides had been fried, and he was dying. News circulated about Bosley's imminent death, and soon his friends and fans were stopping by to love on him and to pay their last respects. Poor Bosley languished at length on his sick bed until one day he seemed to have improved slightly was he really getting better i wondered or was it just wishful thinking long story short bosley didn't die he recovered the only side effect of the electrocution was the near total loss of his hearing which wasn't all bad he could now live out his days peacefully, never again having to cope with scary thunder and lightning. In the end, the Lord had used my accidental shock treatment to provide a cure for Bosley's debilitating storm angst. Now you might be thinking, oh, what a happy ending to that story. But the story doesn't end there. Day after day, the rain continued to fall and the basement continued to flood. On the rainiest days, the storm sewers along our street couldn't keep up with it, and a lake would form in my front yard. Yes, a lake. Keeping my house from floating away into the Rock River was becoming a full-time job, and there seemed to be no end in sight. Back then, 
I had a standing dinner date at my parents' house on Friday nights. This particular Friday night, John was working at the ER at St. Francis Hospital in Milwaukee, so I would be solo battling the floodwaters. Uh, I really should stay home and water vacuum, I thought. But I hate to disappoint Mom and Dad. Ah, oh, fiddlesticks, I don't care, I need a break. So I opened the basement door to see at what level the flooding was. I flipped on the light switch and heard the sump pump kick in. Well, good, I thought, the sump pump can take care of things while I'm gone. And I flipped the light switch off. Simultaneously, the sump pump turned off. Well, that's odd, I thought. So I turned the light on again and the sump pump started up. Light off, pump off, light on, pump on. Aha! A quick investigation revealed that the sump pump was plugged into the only outlet in the basement connected to the light switch at the top of the stairs. Simply plugging the sump pump into a different outlet stopped the flooding. Hallelujah! For thousands of years, the citizens of planet Earth have had a love-hate relationship with rain. Rain has a funny way of teaching us reliance on God. The lack of rain can devastate. I mean, just think of Joseph and the famine in Egypt, or Elijah and the prophets of Baal after three and a half years without any rain. Too much rain can also devastate. I mean, just ask Noah or the victims of the recent hurricanes. However, the right amount of rain is a blessing, a blessing from God. In Acts 14, 17, Luke tells us that he, God, has not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your heart with joy. For several years, we only had occasional moisture on the outer edges of the basement. But then gradually the leakage increased more and more until finally we got an estimate from a basement waterproofing firm. The very day we were planning to sign on the line, a bunch of big trucks and earth moving equipment showed up in the yard across the street. Why were they there? They were there to fix a broken water main which they believed had been leaking for years. Once that water main was repaired, our basement was bone dry. Hmm. The end, we hope. Well, it's time to taste test our cream chipped beef Ooh. and the fried corn. Today, visiting with us at the table are my good friends Emily Krieger and Aura Kukan. So they were going to give it the taste test along with Andrew, Charity, and I. Mm -hmm. So for our combined blessing, let us sing the doxology. Mm -hmm. Praise, Praise God, God from whom all blessings flow. Good. Well, let's dig in. For copies of today's recipes, you may phone 920-262-4021 or email watertowntv at charter.net. This program is available to view on demand at watertowntv.com. Thanks for watching. Join us next time for Carol's Kitchen. <laughs>